We talk about 3D printing every now and again. In fact, we've had some great conversations, which I posted at cat5.tv slash 3D printing. And on that page, uh, we are starting our series on 3D printing. As you can see, we've gone and gotten one. Yeah, that's a very nice one. Hmm, I've settled on the Ender 3 V2 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm brand new to 3D printing, Jeff. It's interesting that this is the one you've purchased. I have it sitting in my Amazon wish list for Christmas. Oh, yes? Yes, and I just said to Jen today, I'm like, I really want to get a 3D printer for me and the boys. Mm. And this happens to be the one that's on my list. Well, so there you go. So you intrigued. get to see it kind of firsthand. Yeah. And, and some of the reasons why I chose this printer, Jeff, is the fact that it's kind of the, it's, it's out of the box, ready to print. Yes. As far as like, it's, it's easy to use, it does a good print job, and it's really, really affordable. Yeah. So there was um, a few I saw that's like, oh, it needs four hours assembly time. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Hey, assembly time, uh, I didn't take four hours, but yeah, it does come partially assembled, but there's a fair bit of setup that has to go into it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at that today. I'm going to show you how it went mm -hmm. for me to assemble it. Again, though, being completely new to 3D printing, here it is. It's like Q4 2020, and Robbie, the tech guy, has never done 3D printing before. But now, you're more of like a programming tech guy. Sure, yeah, but to be fair, Jeff, like I've had my eye on 3D printing for a long time. Yes. Um, it's well, we've kind covered it on the show for years. Sure. Yeah, we have. Uh, we've, we've been talking about it since the Poyo 3D. Mm -hmm. Like this is going way, way back when consumer printers were like two or $3,000 yeah. and they were just coming to market. And then we've like we've had people on the show to talk about 3D printing and how it's going to change the world. Yeah, there was that book. Mm -hmm. That book and was so cool. Here we are, you know, 2020, finally getting into it. To my credit, though, I now here in our our hometown of Barrie, Ontario, hometown, our city, um, our libraries have maker spaces. Yes, they do. So early this year, I was actually email corresponding with their makerspace people okay and talking about okay well i want to get into 3d printing how do i get started and we were setting up for me to come in to their uh, makerspace to start 3d printing for Darn the very first COVID. time well and that's what happened so they had to shut down their makerspace yep. as i was already kind of learning so they they taught me that okay well you need to have these stl models and so that's how I learned about things like Thingiverse and yep. sites like sites like that where people share their designs. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, because they closed down, I couldn't actually print anything. Yeah. But I didn't stop there. I kept trying to learn how to do 3D printing to see because I wanted to see is is it something that's going to be practical. So I started mm -hmm. doing designs on my computer before I even had a printer, even selected a printer. Yep. Yep. So um, I think that was a really good way for me to do it because it gave me a chance to learn some of the ins and outs of how to do it. These hooks. Yes. That was the reason you wanted to get into this, right? Yeah, and we're going to talk about that. Okay. Well, n not the reason I wanted to get into 3D printing, but it, right. and we'll talk about it a after I show you how, how I've assembled this. Um, but the hooks that I'm going to show you are a big part of, you know, one of the ideas that I had. I also so love simple too. There's a Dalek there. There's a Dalek, like, yeah. Of all the things to print. Of course. <laughs> it's like you've got to. You know, I've only printed three things, and the Dalek is one of them. And <laughs> Priorities. A, and a little kitten. Yes. <laughs> so I'm learning. Um, and you're going to be able to learn along with me. So I'm taking the approach. I'm not trying to be that, you know, there, there are a lot of gurus, 3D oh, sure. printing gurus yeah. who have been doing this for years, and they know what they're doing. And they're on YouTube, and there are some great channels. Yes. Filament Friday has been a wonderful channel for me to learn on. I'm actually running a Filament Friday firmware on the oh, Ender 3 okay. V2 right now. Um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of gurus out there, and I'm not one of them. Right. So my approach is a little bit different with the show in the, and with this series, in that you're going to get the chance to learn along with me. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? What have I learned? How have I messed up? Yep. And what am I learning as I go? So it's a good opportunity for you to kind of see how 3D printing works and learn the things that I learn as I learn them. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. We're already absolutely having a blast at home with the 3D printer. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. 
So let's say we get a look at, oh, and I, I said, you know, some of the reasons that I chose this printer over some of the other options. The Ender 3 yes. from Creality, of course, is a very famous um, consumer printer because yep. it's cheap as far as affordability goes. It works with tons of different types of filament. For our series, we're going to be using PLA. It's a very good entry-level filament. It's known to be easy to print, and it does a reasonably good print job, um, but it's it's pretty universally like I can just swap that out with a different spool and start printing and, and it's really really easy mm -hmm. but Creality introduced the V2 this year and of the Ender 3 and it kind of comes with a lot of the upgrades that people were having to create for themselves okay so you get a, a lot of the stuff out of the box that otherwise um, wouldn't have been an option with an, right. an, an older gen of, of the uh, Ender 3. So there's, there's a lot of reasons to choose this printer. I'm not saying this is the best printer by any stretch, right. but as far as the economics of it go, it's really affordable and it does a great print job. And as, as far as out-of-the-box experience goes, you can see I've already been printing stuff and yes. I'm just getting started. Yeah, it's so very clean prints. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the things with some of the printers is, you know, you, you read reviews, you look at the the close-up photos and it's like wow it's not really a smooth looking print it's kind of clunky mm -hmm. these are really clean thanks jeff i'm a noob well done yeah all right so let's take a look at how i went about assembling the ender 3 let's do that together the ender 3 v2 comes partially assembled the base is assembled but we are going to need the instruction manual because we need to make sure that everything goes together correctly. There is some assembly required. You should be able to do this reasonably easily, especially if you follow along what's in the manual, what you're going to see here today. Let's start looking at the components. We've got the extruder kit here. Um, this is what the filament is going to, it's the hot end of the printer, so this is what the filament is going to come out of. It's going to melt it and move around on all the axes. Then we've got the, uh, the screen here, which is an upgraded screen from the previous iterations of the Ender 3. It is color, but it's not touch, just like previous versions that uses the dial wheel. Here we have the XE axis kit, uh, which has the XE motors. X being left and right, E of course being the extruder, which is basically pushing the filament into the uh, hot end. We'll set that aside. And here's the material rack and the spool holder, and this is where you're actually going to put your spools of filament. And we've got some aluminum extrusions uh, for parts of the frame that we're going to put together. So this portion of the Ender 3 V2 is already assembled. This has got the heated printing platform. Uh, quite often you hear this called the bed, um, and it's all part of the machine base. It's all put together already for us. Oh, and it looks like one of my uh, leveling knobs has come off in shipping. We'll fix that in a moment. Uh, but the machine base and power supply are already assembled. That has the Y-axis tensioner and the motor uh, for the Y-axis. Power cable's there. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got more extrusions uh, for the frame. These look like the Z-axis, which is your up and down uh, part of the frame. And just watch that Z-axis rod that's packaged inside. You don't want that to fall out. So you can see that's a threaded rod. It's got some grease on it, so watch. That's why it's got that sleeve. Um, but we're going to set everything aside here and get started. So here's the Z-axis motor. Uh, it has the rod coupling for that rod. Uh, so we'll assemble that in a moment. On to the final stuff. We've got some sample filament, the belts, uh, extrusion nozzles, things like that, and the belt tensioner for the Z-axis. Couple screws. We've got the Z-axis passive block, that's the wheels that are going to go up and down on the right hand side. And it came with a scraper, which is great for removing prints from the bed, or slashing the eyes of your enemies. And we've got a couple of tools here and screws and such for the assembly itself, and there's also some side cutters included in there as well. Little bonus. So first things first, I'm going to replace that bed leveling knob that uh, came off during shipping. Ah, there it is. 
So it should just go right on there. Our first 3D printer repair right there. <laughs> note as I'm moving things around here that glass bed is held onto the heating platform by a couple of clips. Just make sure those clips are snug before you start moving it around like I am here because you don't want that to fall off. It shouldn't but just keep in mind. There's the extruder with the hot end of our 3D printer. And back to the book. Jeff will be so proud of me to see me reading the manual. going to kind of lay everything out here. We've got the Z-axis switch, uh, came with an SD card and card reader, like a USB reader. Uh, just lay everything out so that it's easy access as I'm going through the manual and figuring out how to set everything up. And there's the side cutters that they've included for you. That's great for trimming pieces of your uh, 3D prints, especially if you have any platforming, uh, you're going to need those. Now it is a bit of a process to work your way through the instruction manual and assemble your Ender 3 V2, as I'm about to do. So just follow along in your manual, and I'm going to speed things up through the magic of television. we have it, the Ender 3 V2 is fully assembled and ready to print. When we come back after this quick break, we're going to talk about my first impressions as we print our very first 3D prints on the Creality Ender 3 V2. Stick around.
welcome back. You'll notice at the end of the fast motion video there, this particular um, cabling here was on the outside of the top uh, extrusion. Uh, so I had to just simply remove two screws and put it inside, but you'll save a bit of time uh, maybe if you make a note of the position of this. It wasn't quite clear in the manual and there okay. were a couple of things like that that just weren't quite clear, but easy enough to figure out as sure. long as you're patient and, and uh, take your time. But uh, I think now that I've assembled it, Jeff, I could probably throw one of these together in half the time. Oh, that's easily. Good. How, so, and how long did it take you to assemble this? Well, I mean, I was shooting video and everything, so it's not really a fair, um, fair equation, enough. right? Because, you know, I had eight cameras around me and I'm setting everything up and, and setting up my shots and things. But, oh, you got to um, look good for camera. Uh, I got it. Uh, about an hour and a half it took me okay. altogether. So I think uh, you could probably put this together in about a half hour realistically That's pretty decent yeah yeah so the the first things that i've noted as a brand new 3d printer guy maker uh never 3d printed anything in my life <laughs> The, the first thing I did was I leveled the bed, and that's really, really important to use these dial wheels, use a piece of paper, and I'm going to be demonstrating how to do that. There are videos on YouTube, but okay. we will make that part of the series as well. Okay. Uh, leveling the bed is the first thing that you need to do. Once it's level and things look good, then you can start your 3D print. So Perfect. it came with an SD card, as you noted there, and um, the SD card has some G-code models on it. So oh, okay. my son Liam wanted to print the cat. It was just on our, on the screen we just saw there's a cat. So right. let's try that. Makes and sense. You guys have cats. We do now. Yes. <laughs> so um, so he printed this. And as you mentioned, Jeff, like it, it came out really, really great. So this was our very, very it's first print. Smooth. Yeah, so this was just the G-code that was included on the SD card, and it came out absolutely beautiful, yep. and he's thrilled with that. So that was our very, very first print on day one. Okay. So then day two came, and nothing was working. The really? bed wasn't... Uh, so because I'm starting, to, I'm starting to play around with my own designs, um, you mentioned these hooks. We're going to yes. look at those. But th So the hooks were going to be my second print. Okay. I designed my own mask hooks yes and these are these are meant to go on a half inch pipe mm -hmm. so the cold water uh, pipe in our laundry room because we have an unfinished laundry yes. room yeah this clips on to the half inch pipe and it gives uh, us a place to dry our uh, reusable washable masks yeah. our face masks um, so it's just a, a neat little thing that i came up with but my wife was was thinking like, hey, this is really, really high. I can't quite reach it. So the next iteration was a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And I went through a couple of iterations. So this was the the first one was just this little tiny guy. Yep. Right. And then the next one was a little bit longer. And then finally, the final print came out like this. So wow. I simply I simply extended the uh, the length of it. And I designed this in a program called Tinkercad, which is a Tinkercad, free, okay. it's a free website, yep. tinkercad.com. All the links of the tools that I'm using throughout the course of the series are at cat5.tv slash 3D printing. Uh, but that's what I use to design this. Very cool. So I basically just, I laid it out in Tinkercad and, and that's what I came up with. Cool. So, and it printed great once I figured it out. But yeah. day two came and nothing was working. And I say that because I was struggling to get the bed to level because nothing was sticking to the bed. And it's really, oh, really important. What okay. I found is it's very important that the first couple of layers are stuck to the bed because if they're not, as the printer is moving up, it's, it's going gonna, gonna to lose adhesion yeah. and it's going to move. The, the print is going to move and then it's not going to be printing the right thing in the right spot and it's not going to work out. Was the bed heating up? The bed was heating up to 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. Everything was working there. So I did everything from, I, I gave it a quick wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol. Yep. Um, I upgraded the firmware to one from Filament Friday because it came with, an, like the original firmware had some bugs in it that he'd mentioned. Oh, okay. And so I installed his firmware okay. and it still wasn't working for me, Jeff. Hmm. And then I started thinking because, you know, I'm, I'm the troubleshooter. Right. Yes. So I've tried everything. Every time I leveled the bed, it still wasn't adhering to the bed. So then I started saying, okay, well, what's different between yesterday and today? And the one thing that I came up with is our first day print was from the G code provided by Creality. Yeah. Creality. My second print, second day print, 
was a G code that I created. Now understand, so I've learned a couple of things. So I mentioned that I, I made this in Tinkercad, I designed it in Tinkercad, but f that gives you an STL file. Yes. Or an OBJ or whatever. So these are the file extensions. So that STL file can't go to the printer. You need what's called a G code, which is a file that tells it how to build the layers. Okay. So that's, uh, I'm using a program called Cura, which is also free. Uh, links again at cat5.tv slash 3D printing. And with that software, um, it creates the slice layers. Yes. Okay. And it, cr it spews out a file called a G code file. And so the G code for this was on the SD card, came with it. The G code for this is something that I made in Cura. Okay. So then I started thinking, okay, well, what's different? So I got researching, I got looking into it. And then finally, after several hours of tinkering, Jeff, I found out that G code is actually a text file, a script. Oh. So I opened it in my text editor yep. and looked at it and I started seeing that this is just a script. It's like code. Yep. So then I looked at the code for this one and I looked at the code for mine and I compared the difference at the start of the file and found that my G code from Cura was telling the extruder to raise two millimeters at the start of the print and there was a comment that said, "Oh." so that it doesn't scratch the print bed. And it was raising a full two millimeters. So I started looking, so I started another print and I looked down at the extruder and sure enough, a at the gap. beginning, at the beginning of the print, I saw the extruder go up two millimeters so it wasn't quite down on the bed. So it wasn't able to adhere to the bed. So I went in, I copied the header from this G code and pasted it over top the header of fun. my G code. And I printed out a good 10, 15 of these hooks. So and it worked perfectly. Why the different header? Because different, you didn't program that. Different either. start code. No, it was just the default profile. So it was. Huh. It had this raise up two millimeters or whatever. So so having replaced it with this header, the start code from yep. this one, everything printed just fine. So I was like, oh. So that was a revelation for me to realize that the G code is an editable script that you can go in and you can modify. And then I'm thinking about all the wonderful things that you can do with that knowledge. Yeah. And it's wonderful. So then I took that huh. G code, the, the start part of the G code, and I pasted it into my profile in Cura to always use that as my start code. That's smart. Replacing the one that came with it. Uh, made a couple of little mini modifications based on the knowledge that I had accumulated from the research that I had done. Yep. And uh, now I've got a start code that is working like that. Huh. Just beautiful. So every print comes out nice. I how many people would have re run into that issue and would have said the machine's just not working? Nobody was saying, check the start code on your G code. Everybody was saying, huh. okay, make sure your bed is level. Yeah, I did that. 10 times, make sure that the bed is clean. Yeah, I did that. Make sure, you know, that there's no Interesting. like, yeah. So all this stuff, make sure the bed temperature is good. Uh, the G code from Cura was defaulting to 50 degrees Celsius. I noticed that this one was 60 degrees Celsius. So, so I increased it. 60, yeah. Yeah. And that was done through the material mm -hmm. in Cura. Again, I'm going to show you how to do all these things. So wow. don't worry. Okay. But that's what I learned. So then we started printing other things, and my other son, Zach, said, I really want a Dalek. Yes. And so we got onto Thingiverse and downloaded the STL file for a Dalek. Now, that is not monochromatic. That's got two colors. You're right. So what we actually did is we first printed these parts. Okay. Okay, so these little guys, the extensions, and these actually clip into the Dalek. So we printed it in two parts. Very cool. Yeah. Um, you'll see that these are all white. Yes. They are all printed, Jeff, with that sample spool of filament. That's I was able the to, sample. I was able to get this out of the sam sample that they wow. sent. Wow. So I didn't even have to tap into my purchased filament. So that is uh, what we came up with for, for Zek as well. Very so neat. I was really, really impressed with that. And he's very, very happy with that model. Uh, when I was removing the, um, the supports for the, uh, the black parts, because yep. they're so tiny, yes. I kind of clipped a little bit too far in places, but we can reprint those little parts. I was about to say, you can reprint. And we start talking about how, because they're attachments, we could create other attachments and yes. play around with all that kind of stuff. So speaking of wanting to um, 
basically adapt our designs to our own needs, so yep. creating attachments and things like that. The next thing that we wanted to do, is, well, he wanted to print in black. Of course. So I got a little spool, 250 grams of black filament. Yep. And it's fine, but it was affordable because it's only 250 grams. I didn't need a big one yeah. kilogram thing. But it doesn't fit on the spool holder because the hole is too small. Oh, no. So I was like, well, what do I do? What do I do, Jeff? Any you suggestions? You print a new spool holder. You print a new spool <laughs> holder. So I actually, I went on and, and I started designing based on some designs that I found on Thingiverse. But I created this huh. little guy. So this is printed with the uh, transparent uh, filament. Yep. Um, this is a new spool holder specifically designed to hold these little spools. Well, so I you. built, I made this spool holder specifically to replace that, and it just screws on. Yep. And allows me to to print using the 250 gram spools. So then I'm like, I can actually adapt my 3D printer, create a, accessories and attachments. Yeah. That. I, I don't have to get on Amazon and buy new parts or try That's to track right. down a you smaller spool yourself. holder. You print it yourself. So how cool is that? That's awesome. So overall, my experience so far has been great. I'm learning as I go, and that's yep. part of the fun. Uh, my kids have been so patient as I've been learning, and sure. that's, that's been a good experience for them, I think, as well. Yeah. Uh, but the Ender 3 V2 has been, I mean, so far so good. It's a fantastic little printer. It's quiet. It's got the quiet circuit. Uh, oh, okay. the the yes. the board itself is like a uh, I don't know it's upgraded on the uh, V2 mm -hmm. um, and apparently is quieter than the older versions. We're going to be looking at the actual sound that it generates. But you hear the fans. Of course, um, there is the cooling system to keep things cool. Yep. Um, but uh, it's reasonably quiet. Like we could have it running right here, and it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't probably even be picked up on our microphones. Very so. neat. Yeah, so that's kind of, you know, that's a, a bit of a primer as to, you know, here I am. I'm brand new to 3D printing, and I'm 3D printing. I'm doing my own designs. I'm using free software uh, in my browser. In uh, I'm, I'm using Cura, which is an actual installed application that you can yep. download and install. I did find Tinkercad has one limitation, being a free online um, service, is that the um, STL files have to be below 25 megabytes. Oh, okay, so you're limited on size. Yes. Now, oh, okay. that's not a problem when they're only like 200 kilobytes and things yes. like that. But as soon as I got into some more sophisticated designs, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is 26 megabytes, and I can't mm -hmm. edit it in Tinkercad. So that will eventually lead me to start looking at other things. But I think yes. Tinkercad is a really good starting point. Okay. So cat5.tv slash 3D printing is where you want to go to follow along with this series, learn from my mistakes and from my victories. And uh, I'm also sharing absolutely everything that I do um, through GitHub. You'll see links there. So I've got the designs here on uh, my, uh, what is it called? My mini, is it my mini maker or something like that? I started using Thingiverse, but it's really buggy. Yeah. So, um, You'll see the links there anyways, cat5.tv slash 3D printing. I'm still learning all the terms. I'm still learning how everything works. That's exciting. I'm brand new to it. But I am sharing everything that I've learned. And yeah. even that start code for, for Cura is available on my GitHub repository oh, as awesome. well. So Excellent. That'll get you started as, as well. So all the tips. This, uh, you know, As I mentioned earlier, this is the one that's actually sitting on my Amazon yeah. wish list. Yeah. So uh, if you could... Do me a favor mm. and just let my wife know how amazing this is. Yeah, I'll just kind of <laughs> let her know. I'm just going to start sending her all the videos. Yes, please Hey, check do. this out. I hear Jeff might be interested in 3D printing. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> totally amazing. Yeah. And if you follow along the, with the series, Jeff, you're going to have a real good head start on me because all Absolutely. the things that I've had to learn the hard way, um, you're going to be able mm. to do. And even so much as these designs are available for you through my GitHub. Now... Maybe this doesn't fit into your full review, but I've got to ask, why clear filament as opposed to the typical <laughs> red, white, blue? You've you got to buy filament anyway. So right. I, needed, I needed filament to print the small spool Yes. because I didn't have a small spool to yes. print with the cheap filament, right. the 250 gram filament. The reason that I got translucent filament is because I'm going to be making signage for Category 5. Oh, yes. So okay. The first handful of layers so about a half an inch you are going to be translucent so that light 
so that light, I yes, us talking about they're going to have now. LEDs inside. Okay. Uh, and then the top layer is going to be black. So nice. I thought, hey, I've got to buy filament anyways. I'm going to buy uh, a roll of the translucent filament because I'm going to be using it anyways. And it looks really cool. Yeah. It does totally look really does. nice. Yeah. That's great. Don't forget, we are on Twitter at Category5TV. And I'd really appreciate it if you would consider becoming part of our Patreon fleet. Head on over to patreon.com slash Category5. It's a great way to support the content that we create here at Category5 TV. But at the same time, you're going to gain access to some behind the scenes and uh, a lot of great content that is only available to our patrons. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Bye.